concerning Jesus, people, partners and friends, we're going to do this faith confession concerning the power of God's hope. I ask you to repeat after me. God's hope is a supernatural hope that is now working in my life. Together with faith and love, the bad news of this world will not make me forget the power of God's hope and allowing it to work in my life. With God's hope, I am not afraid and I get my hopes up for extraordinary things to happen. With God's hope, I have all the hope I need to live in this world every day. God's hope, give me a higher hope for a better outcome than any flimsy false hope this world has to offer me. God's hope is able to change any hopeless situation I face every day in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus people, it's another opportunity. We've been granted to give God worship. We've been granted access to give Him praise. And despite of what it looks like, we believe that we will press on. We will press on. We will not give in. We will worship Him in spirit and in truth. He's looking for a worshiper that will worship in spirit and in truth. So wherever you are, no matter what you're dealing with, open up your mouth, shake yourself loose, and command your spirit to press on. Command your soul to press on. Command your mind to press on. Come on, that's your neighbor and say, press on, press on, press on. Come on, make some noise.
keep pressing on because our God, he's mighty. Our God is mighty. He's mighty at battle. Hallelujah. Come on and make some noise right where you are. Help us sing this song. It says, Lord, you're mighty. 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 No. 
morning, Jesus people, and welcome to JPMCI as we celebrate the goodness of our God. We're so happy that we could be a part of this wonderful family together. We are in October, everybody. It's October, and we're excited what God is doing in our atmosphere, in our homes, and in our lives. I want you to do, he's, he's doing great things for us, and we stand encouraged. You know, let me read this scripture with this really quickly in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. It says, fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. As you trust the Lord, that means you rest in safety. So come on, we're going to trust him every single day of our life. Let me pray over us right this morning as we begin our services. Our Father, we just thank you for your time of impartation. We thank you for the word of God that is rich. We thank you for the seeds that you've sown in us so that we can build strong and dependable lives in you. We are so honored to be your children. And as we reverence you this morning, as you give us the word that brings life, God, we just thank you that we hold fast to this word. We grow and we see the impartations of what the word can do manifest in this October, November, December, like never before. We believe that this is our best time yet, that we are protected through the almighty God and we give you glory, honor and praise. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance right now in Jesus name. It's in the precious name of your son Jesus that we pray and we say amen. Come on and give God the praise. We're excited. Today is a great day and as we celebrate the goodness of our God, we're going to welcome. So let's welcome everybody to JPMCI. Sing it with us y'all. Welcome. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together as we welcome you to Jesus' people. Welcome, oh welcome to Jesus' people ministry. A place where you will find God's glory and majesty. It's a high, whatever you need. Well, welcome back. Hallelujah. And you already know what time it is. It is time for us to give time to sow and we won't even take long this time of the service. Uh, we'll put up our ways of giving, if you will, so that everyone can see uh, there's different ways in which you can give. And we're so grateful that God has allowed us to be a part of this active, uh, a moving technological age that we're able to give in all formats. And you can give uh, by social media, texting to give. You can give uh, on uh, the Internet through the website. You can give by mailing it in. You can give all kinds of ways. And so we're so grateful that we have this ability. And as you're preparing yourself, you know, uh, we as family here at Jesus People, so many different things that are going on and you'll see that in the announcements. But we, we you know, we get big, big commendations on birthdays. You know, we get excited about birthdays. And today is a very special birthday. And I want to send a huge shout out to a really cool young man. I happen to know him personally. As a matter of fact, I've known him for 15 years, if you will. Can you believe that? I don't, I don't look uh, over 20. How can I have a 15 year old? But I want to say happy birthday to none other than Mr. Lawrence Wright himself. He is a young man growing in the things of God. Ninth grader, strong in stature. I tell him all the time, he's not my daddy. He thinks he is, but give him a big happy birthday, if you will, y'all. And we want to celebrate him today. God is doing great things throughout our body and all those that were born in the month of October. We'll give you all a little bit of, of a month. September really tried to take over, but it's coming up and, and we're just thanking God for who he is in our lives uh, as he continues to show forth his goodness on us. And we sow our seeds in the house of God, you know, just past uh, a couple of days ago, as we shared in our state of the church address, it was a great time for us to really give us the information that we needed to know of where we're going, where we 
been what God is doing. In the month of September, over 200 souls have been saved as we shared specifically in salvation. That's a blessing. You ought to give God some praise that people are coming to know Jesus. And that's what it's about. We're continuing our mission, showing people through the life that we live, through the words that we say, that Jesus is Lord. And so we, we, we were able to share with over 200 people and they called in and we actually called others to find out, have you talked to somebody and who has been saved in this time period? Because we wanna know that the body of Christ is being you know, won over and people are coming to the body of Jesus Christ. So it's an exciting time. And although we're hearing different things throughout our nation, I want you to stay abreast, stay strong, and stay encouraged. The goodness of God is with you. The greatness of God is on you and for you. And so we're not giving in or giving up, but we're pressing towards the mark of the high calling, like the Apostle Paul said, the high calling of Jesus our Lord. And you press and you keep focus. You stay assignment driven as the Lord had given us the insight to do and we continue on. So if you're ready to give, I'm going to pray over our seed just before it's time for the word of God and we give God the praise. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the seeds that we have to sow. We thank you for this wonderful house that we're sowing in. Jesus, people, ministries, church, that we are on fire for you and we are doing the work of the ministry at every hand. Thank you for the open door of opportunity that you continue to give us to bring income and increase into your house, to build up your house financially. And as we obey your word, God, I thank you for witty ideas and inventions and all kinds of wonderful things that are happening throughout the body in this season. We are reaping those things that we've sowed and those things that we haven't. God, things that you've laid in store for us. We thank you that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for us, the just, and we give you honor and glory that we are bulldozing our way through in Jesus' name. To everybody that's out there, come on in, agree with me in prayer. Say amen, hallelujah. What a wonderful time to sow your seed. I'll be back in just a little bit to share the word of God, and we're going to be encouraged. To God be the glory. Stay prayed up for your information. Happy birthday to everyone born in the month of October. Will you please stand? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Be sure to dial in and join us for times of prayer on Wednesdays at 11 a.m. and Saturdays at 9 a.m. Dial 712-770-4010 two two six six seven two pound the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned you have enlarged the nation and increased their joy they rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and 3. Upcoming events. Get ready for October Family Fun as JPMCI Kids Church, our youth and young adults, host a night of joy. Join us on Sunday, October 25th at 6.30 p.m. in the JPMCI parking lot for a family film and more. It's almost time for Founders Week. Make plans to join us for JPMCI's Founders Week, both in person and virtually, November 1st through 6th. A schedule of events will be provided. New visitors welcome. If this is your first time tuning in to us at Jesus People Ministries online, drop a comment and send us a hello. We'd like to welcome you to our virtual services. Someone from our team will DM you to stay connected. 
Hallelujah. I hope you hold all of those announcements, everything that's uh, about to happen and coming up. Of course, we're getting ready for Founders Week in November, the first week, November 1st through the 6th. And we're excited about Founders Week, even though we'll be doing things a little different virtually. But November 1st, as you heard, will be our first in-house service that we'll have. And of course you have to RSVP register for that because it'll be on a first come first serve basis based off the amount of seats that we'll have available. Um, those that are, are wanting to come and can come. And we appreciate you, look forward to that time together. After that, of course, we'll let people know how things will progress, but we're praying and believing God for safety during this time, for, for being sensitive in the spirit of God and staying the course. Somebody say, I'm staying the course, hallelujah. Now I, I'm I'm getting ready to start yet another series of teaching. I've been teaching, as a matter of fact, all through this year, we've been talking about the new life and dealing with our new life in Christ. And last uh, month I was talking about laboring in love. And it's very important that we understand uh, how we labor in this walk in Christ Jesus. And so as I was talking to the Lord, I said, well, God, what what is it that you want me to share on and how can I help to build up the body and where we are right now? And, and I, I, I was in a conversation, if you will. And I must have said God is good about three or four times in the conversation. Uh, and then it stuck out to me as I was on my phone and I was about to text and I was about to say God is good. And so the Lord said, why don't you just talk about how good I am? And I said, God, you know, you are good. And he said, but not only that, this is what the Lord speaks to me on. I don't know how he speaks to you, but when God mentioned to me. I chuckle. I laugh. Sometimes I say, ouch. Uh, but when I hear what he has to say, I rejoice in knowing that my father, he's such a good God and God is good. And I question as he is good. Why don't we be good like God? I tell you that much. If God is good, we ought to be good just like God. And what it means to walk in a life of goodness. It, it just, it, it just pretty much says that you're such in a place in your spiritual nature and you've become so one with the presence of almighty God. God that lives on the inside of you through Holy Spirit, that when things push out of you, it oozes out good, nothing else, good and great, nothing bad, nothing stale, nothing nasty, nothing ugly. And so it's going to take something for us to allow the goodness of God to permeate out of us, just like we see coming through God. And God has no other uh, aspect of being but to be good. And we'll look at uh, the book of Luke, I believe it was in Matthew, Luke and uh, the book of Mark, how how we saw this young ruler. And of course we hear the information and we know that story, but we're gonna see some things in a greater perspective. Let's pray over the word of God and let's bless it. Father, we just thank you for this time. I pray and I thank you for your anointing to rest and fall even now as we share, even now as we speak, Father God, people's hearts are already excited, already open to hear what you have to say because they're just so anticipating this food that we get from you. God, I thank you that this draws us closer to you, that it encourages our faith, that it ignites us in a place knowing that you are good, that we ought to be just like you and walk out goodness in everything that we do and say. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray and we do say amen. Come on and give God the praise this morning. Hallelujah. He's a faithful God, a just and a true God. Now, if you will, the, the word good, of course, we know good is indicative of something positive. Good represents represents a, 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 a upward mobility, if you will, something that helps us to know what's right. Good represents the right of an aspect. Uh, good opens up a benefit for us. So as we were talking about laboring in, in love and there are benefits that come, well, good brings out benefit in your life. So there's always something that you can do, but is there something that's better? Is there something good that you can walk in that's a little bit different from what you have been doing? And so the spirit of the Lord wants to encourage us. Somebody say God is an encourager. He wants to encourage us to be good, just like he's good. Now that's a fruit of his spirit. Goodness belongs to us. And so here we are recognizing the truth of Almighty God. I want you, if you will, I'm going to go to a couple of scriptures, but God in his goodness, and they be said in many ways. People say that all all the time they say, well, God is good. God is good. Well, if he really is good, what does that mean for us? If he's good, then that means we begin to take him at his what y'all 
at his word. So his word is what he says. His word is Jesus, our Lord. His word is what he promised us. So if God is good and we take him at his word, then we begin to operate off of what his word says and not off of what we what? See, come on. We don't operate off of what we see anymore. We operate off of who he is and, 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 and his word to us. Now, James chapter one, you can go there if you will. We'll start from here as our focal text and understanding that James chapter one and verse number 17, it talks about what's good and it talks about the things that we get from our father God. And James one verse 17 says every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. Now, first and foremost, I want us to understand God doesn't change. Jesus is the same yesterday. The Bible says today and forever. The scripture gives us understanding. He does not change. He does not switch up on you. He does not variance, if you will, change colors. He won't dime on you. That's what the old folks used to say. Or excuse me, the wiser generation. They tell you he don't dime on you. God is for you, never against you. In Jeremiah, it tells us that he plans good for us. And that good is to give you an expected end. It's just, I, I want the good things for your life. And so here in the scripture, as we understand the book of James, every good thing, that means that if there's calamity, if there's bad in the world, that's not coming from God. Now God allows. People say, well, why does God allow? Well, God's not a dictator. He's not going to make things be the way he desires them to be. I was really listening to uh, a prophetic word not too long ago of how uh, the elections and how different things are happening and how people would say, you know, get this person out and put this person in or keep this person there or do this and that. And, you know, God will allow what people allow, what men allow. This is why the word of the Lord has come to the church and to the body of Christ for us to be in prayer, for us to, you know, pray for the nation that they repent before God and just turn themselves back to a nation that trusts in God. But the answer Antichrist spirit doesn't want to hear that. The Antichrist spirit is against God, doesn't want the will of God to be done. So the Antichrist spirit will contradict or come against anything that it possibly can. And so we as believers have to stay very, very uh, uh, subtle, if you will. That's why the Lord tells us to be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. The word of the Lord, God's love was sent so that people would be salvaged, so that they would be saved, not so that they would be condemned by sin, not so that they would be down trodden. They already know if people already know they're doing bad or they're doing wrong, they already understand they're not walking in the truth. They're not doing good. So we have to show them what good looks like. Come on, somebody. We have to show them how to live a good life, how to live a trusting life, how to live an obeying life so that they could see how, 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 how beautiful and how benefiting it is for their lives. And they'll want to make the switch. Now, I know in the spirit that the enemy doesn't like for us to speak in such a truth. But the real understanding is God is good. Come on. So we might as well be good like God. God is good and is a mercy. It endures forever. I'm going to get to the book of Nahum. I promise I will as I, as I share some things. But look at this first. Every good and perfect gift is from above. The gift of Holy Spirit. And he provides for us the love, the joy, the peace, the long suffering, the goodness. Say it with me. Goodness. All of these fruit. These are giftings that God gives us. And, and even the more so he's gifted us with people in the body of Christ that help us to build our spirit man past pastors, preachers, uh, 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 our apostles and our leaders that help us to develop ourselves so that we can walk in the truth of Almighty God. God is a good God. Yes, he is. Now we'll talk about and we'll detail some of the simple things that your everyday life experiences and resting in how you can remind yourself because we have to be reminded. Uh, tell somebody, text somebody and tell them you have to be reminded that God is good. And now it's a it's an unfortunate thing that you have to remind yourself. But the more you remind yourself, the more you begin to build hope on that. The more you remind yourself when things start happening that you see in your life that you do not 
like, you will begin to say, wait a minute, but I know I'm resting on the promises of God. I know that every good thing comes from my father. So if I'm looking at something that's not so good, God, I thank you that you turn this report around. God, I thank you that you turn this situation around. And then you can say it with joy in your heart. I'm speaking out in the atmosphere for things that the enemy would try to come bring to us, things that he would try to attack us with. We cover it even now by the spirit of God, because God is a good God. Somebody say he's a good God. God is a good God. So I'm going to be good like God. Now, me being good like God is me trusting. And I get excited this early. I want you to uh, preach and teach with me this morning uh, because it's the truth. It's the truth of the living God. Go over, if you will, to Luke chapter 18. Now, here's where we get the story of uh, of the um, the young man, the young ruler. Now, now in this story, and I know we've shared this story before, but in this story, we get uh, to see and understand this young man who is dealing with uh, all of the natural things and natural things happen in your life where you deal with natural instances and you go through natural things. And as you do, the natural things can't hold so fast to you that you're not able to release them and trust in the supernatural spirit of almighty God. Now, this young man, of course, he had already said that he had he'd done different things and he'd obeyed for some time. Now, as you look into Luke chapter 18, uh, it's so interesting uh, because in this particular text, we get a series of stories, right? The master begins to give us a series of stories. One was about the widow and, and the judge and how the judge became, you know, his justice was ruling and reigning because of what was going on uh, with this woman. She had importunity. She kept persisting. Well, we see how through these different stories, how the goodness of God prevails, right? How, how good overwhelms and comes out. You get the, the, the story of the men in the temple, how one thought, you know, he was better than the other. And God judges. He looks at the heart. So you see the goodness of God unfolding and continuing. And then as you get down towards the end of this particular chapter, we see and this is the young man. So in verse number, I believe it's uh, 18 or so. Here it is. There's this religious leader and he asks Jesus a question. He says, good teacher, what should I do to inherit uh, eternal life? He's he's trying to persuade and he's trying to use his natural abilities. And, and again, we know this story and in this story and how things uh, happen. But here's what Jesus said, because he has one discernment of spirit. Spirit. Now, the goodness of God will cause you to recognize how people are uh, attempting to be. You can you can you can pinpoint discern spirits in, at any moment because God is working with you. The word of knowledge begins to happen with many of us uh, believers if we've tapped into this gift of God. And so here it is. Jesus, he says, now, why do you call me good? Because to recognize that I'm good means that you recognize I have something that possibly could be a benefit to you. Point, point intended, right? Case in point here, if you can identify something about somebody, if you could say, oh, I, I like such and such, or I, I, I like what they're doing and how they're doing it. Well, that means that maybe perhaps you would attribute that what they're doing is a benefit and maybe possibly this is something that I need to tap into, especially if it's in the same arena. Well, we're in the same arena uh, being believers in Christ Jesus. Here we are. We're believers. We're of the church of Jesus Christ. We're built into wanting to be more and more like like the Lord. And so here you have this young man, religious, if you will. He's supposed to be in the way of God. And so he's identifying that God uh, through Jesus can be seen. He says, uh, you know, a good teacher, if you will. And, and, and he says, the Lord says to him, well, why do you call me good? And Jesus asked only uh, only good or only God is truly good. But to answer your question, he says, you know, the commandments, you must not commit adultery. You must must not murder. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely honor uh, and honor your father and mother. Now, you know what Jesus is doing in this particular time, right? You know that intentionally Jesus is putting everything out. He's laying all the playing cards, if you will, out for him because he already knows the answer. He already knows what's dealing with him internally. But instead of him just telling him or showing him, he'd rather him 
decide for himself. Now, that's the greatness of our God and the goodness of God, that God's not going to enforce his way on you. And see, sometimes we're so used to people making us do this and making us do that. I was sharing with the kids not too long ago as we were watching one of the services, you know, uh, I could see how uh, as a mom, if you tell your young sons all the time, do this and do that. And, you know, as they grow up as young men, hearing a woman sharing with them and telling them, boom, boom, you got to do this and do that. By the time they become a man, they don't want a woman telling them nothing, right? Uh, and that's the natural way of things. But then when we tap into the spirit of God, we come into this place, a true recognition that it's not male or female, it's not Jew or Greek, but it's the goodness and the favor of God that is speaking through whomever God uses. And so here it is, Jesus is already knowing what this young man is dealing with. He already has it identified. He already can tell that he has or he thinks he knows everything because he's done it all but yet and still he's missing something and he knows this young man is missing it and I believe the young man well while he thought he knew everything and he thought he could trip Jesus well he he didn't realize he was dealing with the master See, because if he did understand it, he would have let it alone and he would have changed. And see, that's what God wants for us. He doesn't want us to hear this message and hear this word and then not change. So we're talking about uh, knowing that God is good and then us operating in that same goodness to be like God. And you say, well, Pastor, I, I can't really understand to be like God because, you know, uh, God's, you know, he's, He's such his, his infinite ability is just so vast and I'm not God. How can I be that? But you do recognize and understand that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is now living on the inside of you. And God has equipped you with his presence and his spirit to, to kill away, stray away from the carnal, the sinful nature that tries to draw us uh, from where we used to be. And now he's called us into this marvelous understanding of his goodness. Somebody say God is good. God is good. So we ought to be like God. And, and, and it's this understanding. So go back to Luke chapter 18. As Jesus begins to share with him, he tells him, don't do all the things that the man is saying that he's OK. I got that. In verse 21, he says, the man replied, I have obeyed all these commandments since I was young. And when Jesus heard his answer, he said, OK, there's still one thing you haven't done. Sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And now we've heard this teaching in so many different ways and understandings. Now you would say the goodness of God. Wow, he is so good that he would share with him all of these wonderful attributes. But then why does he walk away sad? Why does he walk away? Because the Bible talks about how his continents fail. Why does he walk away with this misunderstanding? or this misappropriate approach is because he knew that through his understanding and seeing how Jesus just laid everything out, he knew that he wasn't operating in what he needed to be operating in. Now, see, God is good, but you've got to accept the truth of where we are, where you are. And if there's something that he's saying needs to change in your life to really tap into the grace that his goodness provides, then that means you got to do it. There are so many people that are living in this life that are not happy with their lives. They're not satisfied. And I'm talking to the believer right now. I'm talking to Christians who say, I love God and he's, you know, I, I, I'm a Christian and I'm standing. But yet their lives, they're not walking in the joy of the Lord. They're walking in discomfort. They're walking in hurt. They're walking in uh, condemnation because they won't allow themselves to disassociate from the things that take away from the good of God. This young man was so he was so engrafted, if you will, in his way of living, in his way of being, in what he had and what, you know, had him that he couldn't he couldn't rest in in allowing God to operate through him. Now, he has said, I did everything. I, I, I have not committed adultery. I, I don't kill anybody. You know, I don't steal. I don't, ki you know, I do everything that I'm supposed to do. I honor my father, my mother. Then why aren't you walking in goodness? Why aren't you happy? Why aren't you fulfilled? What's missing from your life? And I present to you that the goodness of almighty God, which was right there for him to take, 
I mean, he let it just slip away because he was so tied into his natural way of being. Now, here's what God says for us as we move into this time, this next season, in October, November, December, things begin to happen. Maybe some things around us start shaking up and people start shaking up and people start getting uh, iffy, if you will. We know we just read in the scripture that he's the same. He doesn't change. There's no variance in him that our God, he is he's perfect and he produces a perfect understanding. And if we just trust and rest in him, his goodness will ooze out of our life. It'll ooze out into situations. The goodness of God. Why? Because God is good. He's not a bad God. He's not disloyal. He's not uh, not honorable. God is a good God. And because of his love, because of his charity, because of his kindness, he gives us the same opportunity. Now, just like he did with this young man. And gave him the same opportunity to trust and serve. Now go over, if you will. I want you to go over to the book of Nahum, because this is where we're going to see some very intricate things here. I'm, I'm reading from different two different translations. But if just go over there with me, Nahum is in the Old Testament. We're going to look at chapter one uh, as the prophet begins to speak. And of course, here in the Old Testament, we have several things that are going on. And, and you know, the Lord was making his decree uh, on the city of Nineveh. Nineveh had been enemies to Israel uh, and to Judah. They had been uh, coming against them harshly, doing all kinds of things uh, to entangle them and get them to come away from God, which is like what we see in our communities and how people come against the hand of God and the things of God. And they don't want you to be loyal to your God. And in, in this particular chapter in Nahum chapter one, if you will, there are so many different foes and the Lord says all of these different allies that were coming. Go over with me first. I'll start at a ver uh, go down to verse number seven it says the Lord is good. He is a strong refuge when trouble comes. And I'm reading from the NLT version it says, but he will sweep away his enemies in an overwhelming flood. He will pursue his foes into the darkness of night. He says, why are you scheming against the Lord? Because he will destroy you with one blow. He won't need to strike twice. And here's what's going on. If you see this now, God is good. Nahum pronounces, he says, God is good, but don't mess around with him. Don't play around with who he is because God don't play about his people. Now I was getting to this uh, and I don't want to jump ahead of myself, but I want us to see something prophetically as we're living in this world. There are so many things things happening right now. And I'm so glad that this is the first uh, of October. We launch out into the first week, if you will, of this month. And we share together the spiritual understanding. But as we continue to progress in this time, God don't want you to walk in fear. He don't want you to be afraid. Terrors by night, things that are happening. God is good. He wants you to rest in knowing that because he's a good God, you can recognize, you can go to bat. You can understand that he is going to defend defend you. He is going to protect you. He is going to promote you in this season. You say, pastor, promote me. Yes, God is going to is already doing. He's already bringing promotion for your life. All he's asking us to do is to allow the gift of God to work and operate in you so that you can walk in the goodness, that you can continue to dwell, that you rest, rest and know that he is faithful. Rest and know that he is just, that he is true. He's a good God. See, the Lord is a good God. What was going on in this time? Nineveh, all kinds of things were happening. And God began to speak a word that those enemies that were coming against his people, their judgment day was here. Their, their time was nigh. Watch this. Look what he says. Look what he says about the Assyrians and the enemy. He says in verse number 12, the Lord is this is what the Lord has said. Though the Assyrians have many allies and they will they will be destroyed and disappear. Oh, my people, I have punished them before you before, but I will not punish you again. Now I will break the yoke of bondage from your neck and tear off the chains of Assyrian oppression. And this is what the Lord says concerning the Assyrians in Nineveh. He says you will have no more children to care, carry on your name. God began to put out a decree on the enemies that came against him, the people that did not like him. 
his people, his children that were causing oppressions and depressions. God was saying, I'm going to take care of this. What am I saying? I am telling you by the oracles of Almighty God, your God loves you so much. Somebody say preach pastor. Your God loves you so much that he wants you to know he's good for you. He's a good God. You ought to just rest in him and be good like he is because he's taking care. He's handling all of the enemy spirits. You said, Pastor, you don't understand. You don't see what I've been dealing with. I heard the Lord actually, the Lord heard you. He heard your prayers. He's heard everything that you've been dealing with. He's heard everything that you've been saying. He's heard you in, in the midnight hours and he's heard you as you've been expressing, Father, why is this happening? Or what is going on? But God is making available to us his word so that we can trust and know he's a good God so that we can be proclaiming. Uh, uh My God is a good God. I don't care what they say. I don't care what I see. My God is a good God and I'm going to give good just like God. You know, just the other day we were at the um, store. We were picking up something. And uh, someone uh, approached us and, and was basically it was someone, you know, dealing with a loss. He looked like he needed some resources, funds and maybe even a job or he just looked like he was without a job, without a place to live. Uh, I'm being as tactful as possible. And the, so this young man, as he was approaching us, it, it was it was as if, he, you know, he, he, he hangs around a particular area. And so uh, my, my son looked at me and he was like, oh, uh, and I, I began to look at my son and I said, get over over here. Come on, we're going to get ready to go. And as I was uh, approaching that, Holy Spirit said to me, but do something that it will show your son that is not uh, to be afraid of this particular person that you operate in love. And I said, okay. So as I stood at the little register, I told the lady, the attendant that was there, I said, let me, let me ask you something. This person, are they always around this area? And they said, yes. And I said, okay. I said, well, well, go ahead. Let me, let me pay for something so they can have something to eat. I'm going to pay for it. And I'm going to go ahead and put it over there on the table. They can pick it up, get it, and they'll go about their way. Now, what was I doing? I immediately, as I as I saw how this this this, this spirit was trying to approach and bring fear and bring like you know some kind of repel, if you will. Uh, uh, the spirit of the Lord said, even though that's not something that you you want in your space, especially in this season and time, you don't know what people are dealing with. You don't want them to just come up approaching you. But the Holy Spirit said to me, but I want you to issue out kindness. I want you to do good so that it could be seen. This is going into my generations because my son is with me and he's seeing, you know, how I handle what I handle. And sure enough, we bought something for the for the person to have. We took it over. We didn't get by them or near them. We took it over to a, a neutral place and we said, this is for you. We, we pointed to him. This is for you. And we went about our way. Now, what was the seed being sown? That God is good. And while the discernment of the Spirit of the Lord gave me the understanding to protect protect our environment, we yet still issued out the goodness of God, the love of God. What am I saying for us? I'm saying that there are some things that may be in your surrounding that the enemy will try to bring fear to you on, or he'll try to cause you to, to not really want to deal with that or to move away or, or despise, if you will. But God says, wait a minute, just before you you, you despise it from an aspect to make it seem like that's something that you shouldn't deal with, hear my voice, know my voice, know if I'm asking you or needing you to rest in my goodness on this situation and maybe you change what you were about to do because don't get me wrong there are situations there are circumstances that we we, we don't want to even deal with but because God is good look at our God look how he continues to share with us because God is good we ought to be good like God somebody say I'm gonna be good like God I'm gonna do what he says I'm gonna move in how he uh, commands me to move and I'm gonna honor him now as we do that my goodness Hear the voice of the Lord. As we do that, we make open doors available to our lives. And we don't know when, where, how, but God does. And he is counting that for us. God is measuring those things for us. And he's uh, making things available as we continue to trust him. And the blessing of God belongs to you. You're walking in the blessing. You're a, a child of the most high God. But the goodness of God that comes as you continue issuing out his grace and goodness. I mean, there's nothing else like that. And so as you develop, as we count it all joy, I want you to look at the simple things. First and foremost, I want to look at, look at the fact that he's given you life. 
Here's where we are with this understanding. God has given you life. And as he's given you life, you ought to be thankful to say, God, he's a good God. He's a great God. He's faithful to his word. And I'm trusting in him. Oh, what a great God we serve. And do you know, I cannot believe I got to stop right now. Oh, my God. But I'm coming back in the next service and we're going to continue what thus saith the Lord. He's a good God. He's a faithful God. And we love our God. Father, we just thank you so much for the word. We thank you for the hearing of the word. And we thank you that this word falls on good grounds. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus, if you're here this morning, you say, I've heard the word, but I really want to walk in a fullness. I want to walk in a development of who he is in my life. And that's what you're, that's what you're gleaming for. That's what you're desiring in your life. We're going to pray with you right now. Father, I thank you that you bring in salvation and restoration for people, that they will begin to grow stronger in you, that they will begin to develop themselves in you. God, your word is rich. Your word is real. Thank you right now for bringing people home back into the family of God. If that's you this morning, hallelujah, just go ahead and let us know. Send us a prayer request information about who you are so that we can continue to pray with you. Maybe you say, I'm saved. I just don't have a family of believers, a church home. You don't have to look any further. JPMCI is a family uh, waiting and ready to build you up and train you to the glory of Almighty God. Maybe you say, I'm saved, Pastor, but I'm not walking with infilling of Holy Spirit. Infilling Holy Spirit belongs to you through the evidence of speaking in other tongues so you're able to speak with God directly. This is what God has called for his children, that we know him and we know him strongly. We love you and we're so glad that you could be a part of this time of sharing together. Until the next time, the next service, we'll see you again. Be strong in the Lord and know that our God is faithful. Hallelujah.